hand uh, is this little white orb right now. So there it is. That's going to be my hand. And I can write some code that I can attach that's going to simplify this. So I'm going to open up a script here. And I'm not going to talk a lot about programming. Should I, who here is a programmer? About half. I'm not going to like talk a lot about programming. Mostly I just want to talk about, like, like, hey, look, it's actually really simple. And the concepts of it. And so what I'm going to do here, <coughs> I'm going to attempt to get Zoom in to work. And then it's not going to. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. That's... I know, right? Why wouldn't we just work? That's way too easy. It's control plus. Oh, yeah, well, I'm trying that. Even... Mousepad? There we go. Okay, let me do it with mousepad. All right, whatever. And so basically, most of the stuff we don't really care about. I have a public variable of type VR node called node. That's something built into the engine. We'll see what a public variable does for us in a second here. So I'm just getting some type of node. And then inside my update method, update is a method that just runs all the time, every update frame, over and over and over again. It's saying, let's move this object, let's move its position to, hey, Unity, where did you track that thing to? OK, that's where it is. Let's put this there. And we're going to move its rotation to say, hey, Unity, how is that thing rotated? Oh, it's there? OK, cool, whatever. All right? And it's just built in. We're just saying, where is it? Right? Two lines of code, pretty simplistic. Now, because that variable is public, I actually get a drop down right here that just says, hey, is this a left eye, a right eye, a center eye for you omniscients? Uh, head, left hand, right hand, is it a game controller, is it a hardware tracker, what is it? So I'm just going to say, okay, this is going to be my right hand. All right, simple enough. So, I press play again. Oh, he fell over. I hit him already. Well, there it is. Again, really, just kind of that. I was going to knock him around, and then he fell over. Come on, Viking. I told you to fall in the second round. All right, let me mute that audio because that's super annoying. And let me just kind of move it back a bit. I should move everything back a little bit. Stop getting my light. So there's a lot we can do with this from a game mechanic standpoint. So obviously I have a little orb. Orbs are fun, I guess, for some people. But let's just turn that orb and that collider off of it. And uh, I got a little something special in store here. I got a sword. Try that bad boy out. I backed up a bit so I shouldn't run into him right away. Oh, there we go. I didn't. There we go. That yeah, feels a little unfair. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really like finished setting up to do all the other stuff. But... Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm getting beyond tracking there. But yeah, there you go. But... So yeah, I mean, and again, it's just feels fun. I do this every day, and I still like. Oh, look at this. <laughs> um, so it's really, really simple to do, right? And obviously, this is within the context of a game. But what are some other things we can do? Let's 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 talk about some realistic applications here. So let's say uh, I run an architectural firm. I build people's dream homes. And this is a very common use case. We work with a lot of architectural companies, contractors, whatever. They build dream homes, <coughs> two, three, ten million dollar homes. Right? And you know, they look at blueprints and they go, yeah, that looks great. And they come to the homeowners and they say, hey, I made these visualizations. What do you think? And the homeowners go, yeah, that's really great. And then they build it and they go, oh, I hate where this door is. Or I hate this. Or I thought this was bigger or smaller or whatever. And you know, it's easy to do. So I'm going to hit play here. This isn't in VR right now. So this is me just, this is how currently, you know, contractors are showing people their dream homes. So they can walk through the door here, and this is just using the engine. There's nothing kind of special here. And I'm going, okay, here's the bedroom, and you know, I also have this little teleportation thing built in, so you can just sort of bounce around. I really need to increase the mouse sensitivity, apparently. Uh, but yeah, you just kind of come down here, and you walk into the living room, and you go, oh, I'll just float through that couch, and oh, this is a fun little den here, and whatever, right? So yeah, I get a pretty good idea of the space, but do I really get an idea of the space? I'm noticing this, I'm seeing this without depth sensation. I'm only seeing this with depth perception. I know about how big a couch is, so I know how big that couch is. What if I'm wrong? Because couches come in different sizes. Doors come in different sizes, right? All these things come in different sizes. I can make assumptions based off my depth perception, the things that I've learned. But those are only assumptions. And then when I see it in real life, I think, oh, I thought this door was wider. If I told you right now you're going to have a 32-inch door, someone show me what 32 inches is. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, maybe that? 
I don't know, 36 is like the golden standard. He used to deliver refrigerators, so I know that. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, you're going to have 32 inch doors. Fantastic. <laughs> Sweet. And then you're like, oh, I thought, I thought 32 was bigger than that or whatever, right? Uh, and so it becomes difficult. It's hard to gauge. But again, if I just wanted to say, all right, well, you know what then? Forget that noise. Let's just make this a VR application. <laughs> I just clicked something. I don't know what I clicked. Uh, let's go to my product settings, player. Let's just say, uh, let's you know, let's make this a VR game. All right. And the cool thing is, is that I can build this, and we can we can play it on here. I can build it to my phone and you Google Cardboard, Google Daydream, right? Uh, Gear VR. Uh, Apple has its new AR VR toolkit, right? Which is massively popular. We have the, the influx of people using that is just absolutely insane. Anyone with an iPad or an iPad or an iPhone can now just build for that and then go, oh, there we go. By the way, we support that. You know, we have day one support for all, all of Apple platforms and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I mean, as a contractor, I can just be like, hey, here's my phone. Here you go, put that in the set set. And there you are. Yes? The question is, um, can you adjust the heights that you enter the room in? It does it automatically. It so tracks like if, me. So it's tracking you. Because like yeah. if your client comes in the shop and your client is And they're really short? Them. Absolutely. Yes. They're going to see now, a whole different view. This particular demo, I okay. set up <laughs> not tracking my height because I didn't know how much space I have. Okay. And so I set myself up as point tracking, which is going to track me positionally, but it's going to assume my height. But if I set this up in room scale, it would automatically adjust for my height. Okay. Yeah. Because it's a whole different experience, the experience that room where it's set now, which is about six feet. Exactly. Well, so I set this up at actually five foot nine, which is my height, because I was testing with it, and I didn't want to keep feeling like I was going to kick the end table, all right? Um, and actually, so we talked about IPD, interpupillary distance. Most of the headsets have sliders, adjustments. So this is set to my IPD right now, right? But anyone can, if you know what your IPD is, can just adjust it. Or just, there's a thing where it'll show you lines, and you sort of move the slider until they become parallel, and then you know you've got it. Um, but yeah, so again, if I want to like hit play here, and I've got my controller, and I can just say, okay, well, that's how big that couch is. Let me, uh, let me just kind of teleport over into the den. And what's really neat is I can say, all right, Italian design. Well, they didn't read that book, because this isn't Italian at all. Um, <laughs> good karma. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Um, you know, more of Italian design. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, and I could just, well, I teleported into a wall that time, so not great. But uh, now this is kind of one of those areas where the vibe has the advantage, because I want to be able to turn around. This only has two sensors, so it's going to lose me. I can get a third sensor and then it'll track me all the way around. So that is where you get into a little bit of uh, finicky behaviors, trying to get all the tracking in there. But uh, there's the bathroom. It's one of them anyway. You can be like, oh, that's a pretty sweet tub. But that's dangerous. Just leaving that candle burning all the time. Uh, and you know, you can say, oh, you know what? Actually, so, and this is true. So I set this up to be five foot nine, right? That's, that's my height. And if I look at this, that sink is really too high. I mean, I'm washing my hands like this. So I go back to the contractor and be like, man, you got low that sink. That's ridiculous. What are you thinking? All right? So, yeah, and that ceiling is way unnecessary. Massive echo. Um, but yeah, so you get the idea, right? I can see things that, I, in the bloom, I have too much bloom on the scene, you think? Uh, yeah, but anyway. Uh, so I can see things that I wouldn't otherwise notice. And again, after this, I highly encourage people to come up, try it out, and walk around the house. It's actually pretty slick. Um, and so you can see things that otherwise, you know, and honestly, this is, this is really and truly the first time I've ever used this scene for a VR demo. So I just turned VR on it earlier today and earlier before. I had no idea that sync was too high. I've been using this scene for a really long time and walking around it otherwise, but without uh, VR, you don't really notice. Like if I just fly there using non-VR, kind of move over to the sink, I mean, it looks all right. Right? I mean, that seemed reasonable. I'd never even know. And then they'd build a counter that was five inches too high. And I'd hate it. And I'd need to pay to fix it. Right? Um, so a lot of power there. We can also allow, add a lot of punch. Right? So, you know, this is obviously an example of like an architectural, like business oriented. But we also do a lot of marketing VR. That's a really common thing. Right? These one-off experiences. You pull your phone, you put it in your VR, you can see a video. Disney does a lot of this. Go visit the castle from Frozen. Just run on your home and ask your parents. Uh, that sort of stuff. So um, let's say we want to really kind of do this right. So I've got this scene here, and this is already in VR, and it's going to show me a video. It's going to feel like a pretty familiar video. We just saw this, right? 
I need to mute that audio way too loud. You're going to hurt your hearing, kids. Alright. So, this seems reasonable. Okay, I, I, now, I can actually take this video player and wrap it 360 around me to do 360 video, like fully video immersive experiences, like be downtown and see cars and people. It's, that's really, really simple to do. This one just doesn't have that. So, if I had this as a VR experience, I'd be like, okay, this is really neat. But we talked about that artificial imagination, keeping your, your, your new brain, your, 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 your frontal cortex, your consciousness kind of asleep, right? And this is a bad example because where am I, right? Everything about this screams you're in a game or a simulation, you're floating in space. You have no anger, you have n none of this is real, and it, you don't buy it for a second. Well, it might be fun to watch that video, it's no different than if I just watched it on YouTube. There's just nothing about this that sells it to me. We're lacking that wow factor, right? So if I really want to do VR right, if I really want to sell, if I really want to engage people, then I, I need to go the extra mile. I need to put them in experiences that tell them it's real, <coughs> right? And that includes taking the light from the screen and actually changing the light in the rooms based on that. And now, I'm in a movie theater. And with some multiplayer code, I can actually put my friends in the movie theater with me and we can all just watch a movie, right? There's several applications like that. Samsung had one with the launch of the Gear VR. However, they didn't do any moderation of the content. They had a whole bunch of people sitting together watching adult videos. <laughs> shut it down within 16 hours of launching. It has to come back up. But, uh, this is what happens when you underestimate the internet. Uh, is what it is. But by putting people in a, a theater or with their friends, it's a social thing, right? We can hang out, we can watch movies, we can talk, right? And I can feel like I'm watching a movie. If I were to load this up, right, and I can simulate much greater than a 1080p screen here, right? Because it's it's obviously it's, a, it's higher than 1080p resolution, but when you put it further away, it's gonna feel like a massive cinema screen. If I'm sitting in a chair, I grab some popcorn, I throw this on, and I'm watching movies at the movie theater, right? I take one of these when I travel because I watch movies on it, because it's awesome. Right? Because you not only can you watch 3D movies where they really pop out and stuff like that, but you can just load up a theater and watch movies. There's no better way than to watch like uh, um, Pacific Rim on like a super IMAX screen where it's like almost 10 stories high. And you're like, dude, that's awesome. That robot is gigantic, right? And it sells it because you're there with both eyes. You see the giant screen, and it's really really cool. All right. There's Steam has a theater mode where games that aren't necessarily built for VR load up in a virtual screen, giant screen, and you can play them in, on like a movie theater screen inside VR, you know, without actually playing it, you know, out and about. So that really cool stuff, and it really sells the experience. It's immersive. It puts you in there. There's nowhere you can look that's not a movie theater. There's nowhere that you can look that is not. Oh, this is neat. I'm here watching this, right? And it really sells that experience. Right. So those are the three examples I kind of want to talk about. And I'm happy to show you more stuff in Engine, but I didn't know, kind of know how maybe techy everybody was, so I don't want to go to like real nitty gritty with code or anything like that. But everything that I've showed you has had either no code or that little bit of code I showed you. So I haven't done anything here that had code, but I can talk about like more advanced stuff you can do with VR. But uh, nothing I showed you here was that stuff. Um, so that's going to wrap up. I'm obviously here to take questions and hang out, whatever. There's also a survey link here. Uh, survey links just help me a ton because it proves people actually live in Ohio. Uh, because I live in Ohio, uh, but I work out of San Francisco, and so whenever they're like, well, why are you doing this thing in Ohio? Who's there? It's Ohio. And I think, no, there's people here. It's real. Right? And they're here. Yeah, you tell them that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, tell them G said so. But uh, you take a survey, and then they go, oh, there are people, and it's real. Okay, it makes sense for you to go back, and all that stuff. So um, I have a vested interest in improving tech and games and stuff in Ohio because I live here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, you know, I want to keep coming back and doing this stuff. It's much easier if people take the survey. Uh, it's painless, I think it's five questions. It also puts you in a drawing for some swag and stuff, and like you need for a license and stuff like that. Um, but mostly it just proves people were here. Um, and also it allows you to get feedback, so I don't know if I did good or not, or whatever, be honest. Um, but yeah, so please, please, please take that. Don't just snap a picture of it, and then I'll do it later, because you won't. We all know you won't. Quit lying to yourself. This, the link works really well on, uh, on your phone, let's just say it real quick. Uh, also, it is case sensitive. Learned that the hard way uh, when I was at Disney and an L became an I, and all of a sudden, whoopsie, we're on an adult website. 
Um, so always check your links. Those are case sensitive. That was awkward. Um, so yeah, so please fill that out. And while you're all doing that, uh, any questions, anyone want to see something else or anything that you so think I'm completely idiotic about or whatever? Yes, sir. How far away are we from Total Recall? How far are we from Total Recall? Well, memory implantation is a little bit more uh, difficult, but uh, it's going to be four months. Um, <laughs> other questions? Yes, sir. So are you using a CV1 or is it a developer kit or how is that? This is a CV1 with the actual controllers. I like the CV1s, honestly. Um, and what's the purpose for the, like, the developer kits? Like? Anymore? Right. Nothing. They're, they're old hardware. Okay. Uh, so they were the first iteration, the second iteration, and then we get to the the, the, the pre-consumer version, which is you know, basically the same specs and everything, and then the consumer version, which is just a rebranding of the same product. Yeah, uh, different shit. And then obviously they're coming out uh, with some newer ones. Vive has announced some new ones, and then uh, I think HTC and HP have announced new ones. So you know we're hitting our second generation of hardware. This is all still first generation of hardware, but it's still. Yes, sir. So on the Meetup page, I told people if they want to bring their own laptop and download Unity, that we could do a very brief introduction of how to start your own project. Sure. So like, the very first time you fire up Unity, what do you do, I guess specs-wise, to set up um, your first running VR project? Is that something you can do in like less than five minutes? Like, I chill briefly. You can do quite immediately because it's just that okay. one button turns into VR and then you can look around here in VR. I you. Um, you can set up cubes and stuff like that. Um, honestly, if you're setting up something that you want to be more graphical, like the Viking like Quest or any of these other ones, you need some graphics, right? Unity is a Unity is a tool where we take different things and we put them together, but those things need to exist to start with. Like the, the models and the you know the animations and the audio and so we don't make those in Unity. But we have an asset store with tons of free stuff. You just say, I want that, I want that, I want that. It downloads directly into the project. You start playing with them, and I'd be happy to show everyone just like a quick sort of project thing. I'll do that here maybe after we do questions while other people rush to get pizza and whatever for those interested. Yes. <clears throat> what software was the architectural memory created in the model? The, uh, the one we just looked at? Yeah, well, where did that come from? So, um, so I believe those were made with Maya or 3D Studio Max. Now, it wasn't one model, it was hundreds of little yeah. models, that, you know. Um, but uh, there are, people sell like <coughs> packs of architectural assets. You don't even need to generate your own. Uh, a friend of mine does really awesome free renderings of vacuum cleaners. And they sell really, really well because when you need a vacuum cleaner, where else are you going to get one? Right? So, like, little niche stuff, they're all over the place. It's pretty cool. Yes, sir. Um, as far as that architectural one, how much how much of the lighting in that was UD lighting and how much of it was fake? All of it was real time. All of it? Yeah. Wow. So, in that particular scene, uh, I can open it up here. So, we don't use baked lighting. So, we do baked indirect lighting uh, and shader work and some post processing work. So, we actually use these things called uh, post processing profiles. Um, which add a lot of the pizzazz. Uh, that's a technical term, by the way. Um, and so, like you can see, here's my anti-aliasing. Uh, here is my bloom, right? Eye adaptations. Uh, and these work just like you would expect them to, like color grading, like you do full-on color grading and stuff like that. And these are all sort of built-in filters and stuff like that. So the actual lights themselves are mostly real-time. Yeah, all real-time. Not a single baked light in here. Um, but we do bake the light bounces. They're still re real time, they're pre calculated real time. So it calculates surface normals and keeps a huge database. When light hits a surface, it knows which way it's going to bounce automatically, so it doesn't have to calculate it at runtime. And so we can see like when light hits a surface and then bounces to another surface and carries color data with it. That's all kind of pre calculated, but the light itself is all calculated real time. Yes, sir. Can Unity be used for augmented reality? Absolutely. Uh, we have great partnerships with Microsoft. We do a lot of HoloLens. We do a lot of Euphoria <laughs> stuff for augmented reality. Basically, every augmented reality toolkit that exists, we have a partnership with, and we automatically build to and for. Um, so, yes. Uh, do you have a specific example, or? Yeah, custom furniture in the room. Yeah, we, uh, so we work with a couple pretty big furniture companies, names I'm not allowed to say, but um, where you can actually do a 3D scan of your room, and then it builds it virtually, and then be like, 
what does this augment look like here? What does this poster look like there? And what's really cool is you can actually read in the lighting data, like the types of bulbs, and then it will match the color physically based uh, rendering in your scene, in your scene, your actual home. So you can say, I've used a lot of like daylight, natural light lights, which cast kind of a yellowish, orangish. And so if I get something that's, you know, blue, uh, and if it looked blue in my scene in real life, it would actually be kind of greenish, and I'd get mad, that's not the right color. Um, and so what it does is it shades it to match my lights so I see what it actually looks like. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff. There's a lot of free apps um, on Oculus and stuff like that that you can just download and, and check out. And if you like something, you can like directly order it right there from the app and stuff. It's pretty slick. Yeah? Are there any web native, uh, can, for example, can you do the uh, perspective and the sizing in, of the 3D model in this engine and then uh, apply it to a real live, like a, your camera, your phone camera? Like you mean like with augmented reality, like th we'll pass through the camera? Yeah, absolutely. It's really simple to do. Um, after we're done here, I've got like four examples that I can just load up real quick to show you using Vuforia. But uh, basically, you just set up a pass through. It picks an image target or will analyze a scene, and then you just place it. I mean, it's really, really fast process. Yes, sir. Your service is helping out because I was feeling it was getting too complex to say AR, MR, and VR, but you had a term in there called XR. It's very yeah, well, people, can be, people uh, argue videos. over what XR means now, too, naturally. Um, I use XR to mean expanded reality, any of the R's. Uh, other people disagree. Microsoft is trying to make their AR. They started calling it MR, but then they stopped doing special, so they started calling it XR, cross reality. Uh, so, yeah, I think they're just you know, struggling to feel special. So, uh, I usually well, we have all of it. But we have, we have telecommunications, too. Uh, FTTX is fiber to the anything curve house. Oh, yeah. And, you know, anyone will come up with a weird, super long, overly really complicated term if they need to feel special. That's why in game design we have things called orthogonal unit differentiation, yeah. which is a really complex way of saying things are different. Yeah, right? It's, uh, yeah. Instantiation, which you mean make, create? Yeah, instantiation sounds better. You transform transformations using transformations. Yeah. Uh, other questions? Yes? You mentioned uh, during your talk the game that you had the flower and you were touching your feet. Yep. What was that game? Fantastic Contraption. Thank you. It's really, really cool. And uh, it's one of the games my kids play, actually, because it's very kid-appropriate. Basically, you have to get an orb to a goal by building a simple machine, like putting it all together and then putting the orb on it, and then it takes it there, and it's all these challenges. It's a really fun game. There's a cat in all the trucks in it, though, called Nico. Yes? I actually kind of answered it. I was talking about the light. You mentioned that you can look at the color, how if the sunlight comes in and into a room and it changes the blue drapery. Can you, I imagine that you can, can you adapt for seasonal changes in light shifts? Yeah, sure, check this out. Um, this project is a bit more complex, so it'll be a bit slower, so I'll go to this even though it doesn't look like super photoreal. Um, so uh, let me say, so an easy way is with direct lighting. So, you know, it's uh, maybe more nighttime or whatever. You can see how the Viking is changing. Uh, but that's the only stuff in direct light. Shadows would remain unchanged. So I could also, I've got this.